Now, once you've ascertained you do have good open circuit voltage, close the circuit. Close the switch as we see here. Your load should work. Blower motor runs, fuel pump pumps, light bulb makes light. What you want to do then is check for voltage drops. Now, a lot of techs do it this way. I call it the voltage levels along the way. They reference the black lead of their meter on DC volts to ground, and they put the red lead in different spots along the circuit. And they're looking for 12 volts all the way to the load on the power side, and they're looking for zero volts all the way to the actual ground on the ground side. So it looks something like this. So there's 12 volts across that, or not across, but 12 volts after the fuse, reference to ground. 12 volts after that connection, reference to ground. And we should see after the light bulb, we should see zero volts. We're on the ground side. We're measuring the difference in potential between ground and ground. It should be zero. It's eight. So there's a four volt supply to the bulb. It's not really gonna glow very brightly. And if it's a fuel pump or something else, probably not gonna run or run well. So we look to see where that voltage drop started occurring. Now we're actually measuring between chassis ground and the ground at the load. It's eight volts. We move on downstream and we see eight volts basically at the switch input. So the switch is not the cause of the voltage drop. Now we move down to the ground source. But if we're seeing a zero volt voltage drop at the source of ground to the switch, or that could be like an ECM, a solid state switch, but we see eight volts after, or actually at the switch, you go backwards here, then we know where the problem is. The problem is right there between the ground and the ground source to the switch. And that's because we have some kind of a corrosion issue, rust issue, loose connection, uh, something of that nature causing a voltage drop, an unwanted voltage drop in this circuit. Now, the way I prefer to do it is where you take both leads of the meter and put it along the circuit along the way. You can do that across points A and B. You should see less than point one. You can put your meter between C and D. You should be less than point one amp or volts, I'm sorry. If you go between D and E, we'll do that now, we should see the source voltage. The only voltage drop we should get is the voltage drop across that load source voltage. It's not 12 volts, it's four. That means we've got an eight volt voltage drop somewhere else. So you keep moving the meter down between points E and F. So we can actually check the switch now. The switch input, no problem. Across the switch itself, no problem, zero volts. Now we're looking for the bing. The source of ground to that switch is where the resistance is. That connection between chassis ground and that switch. The switch might be a computer, you've got a bad computer ground. What you do is run a redundant ground in that same spot and see if the problem goes away. And you can fix the ground or leave the redundant ground, whatever you prefer. But that's how you do voltage drops the correct way. But remember, open circuit voltage is checked first. You have current flow, you have power, then you can do a VR, a voltage drop test.